Audacity 3.6.2 has been released, and longtime Audacity users may feel relieved. Because it has brought back the old Audacity compressor and limiter as a legacy effect. Many users I know were struggling with the new compressor and limiter introduced in Audacity 3.6. The legacy compressor will keep your audio processing workflow the way it was before. I will show you what I mean by that. In this video, I will first discuss the changes of 3.6.2, and then I will discuss the major update of 3.6 overall. You can see from the changelog that lots of bugs have been fixed in 3.6.2. Other than that, the major change in this version is the legacy effects. You can see I have installed Audacity 3.6.2. In the effect menu, you will find a new menu named Legacy. Legacy effects are actually effects before Audacity 3.6. Audacity changed the compressor and limiter effect totally to a new interface and algorithm. People who were familiar with older Audacity had to readjust their workflow for the new compressor and limiter. Audacity has brought back those as legacy effects. If you prefer using an older compressor or limiter, you can do it from here. However, please note that real-time effects have the new compressor and limiter. If you use the real-time feature of Audacity, you will not get the legacy effects here. The compressor you see is the new compressor introduced in 3.6. Let's now see in detail what changes Audacity 3.6 has over older Audacity. Audacity 3.6 is quite a major update. The interface is redesigned, and you may feel it is not as simple as before. From a simpler interface, it is now going towards a complex interface. I think Audacity now wants to support some advanced audio editing features in the coming days, and hence this change in the interface. You can see I have installed Audacity 3.6.1, and I will go through some of the new features. Audacity 3.6 has introduced the concept of theme. You can now choose different themes in Audacity. You can do that from the preference. Go to the interface, and choose a theme. Currently, the light theme is selected. From the drop-down, I can switch to a different theme, for example Classic. The classic theme is similar to the old interface we are used to seeing. However, the buttons got a new shape. I think regular users of Audacity will be comfortable using this classic theme. It is up to you which type of theme you want to use, but know that you now have options. Let's explore another theme to check how it looks. I will go to Audacity Preference again and choose a different theme. I will now choose the dark theme. I will click OK to apply the dark theme. You can now see how the dark theme looks. I will now record a small clip to check how the waveform looks. It looks completely different from what we are used to seeing. If you like dark themes, you may like this. However, it will take some time to get used to these new looks. If you like the old interface, I would suggest using classic theme. I feel some issues with the new themes. Some of the themes failed to distinguish some differences. I hope the Audacity team will work towards making the themes a bit more intuitive. I will switch back to the light theme to share one of my observations. I am now in the light theme and it is difficult to say if the waveform is selected or not. Because previously we knew a white background meant the waveform was selected. However, that is not the case now. If I double click inside it, you will notice how the selected waveform looks. The selected waveform is getting a bit of a light blue background. It is a bit of confusing. I will prefer the classic theme so that I do not have to adjust too much how I use the Audacity interface. I am not a big fan of changing the interface so frequently. It makes the experience difficult for previous users of the software. That was all about the changes in the interface. But there have been two important changes in Audacity features. One is related to the real-time effect and another one is the compressor effect. In real-time effects, a new master effect controller has been added. If you work with multiple tracks, the master effect can become handy. If you add an effect as a master effect, it will apply to all the tracks at once. If you are working with multiple tracks and want to apply the same effect to all the tracks, the master effect will help. I will make a video soon explaining how to use the master effect. Now we will see the most important feature of this update, the compressor effect. The limiter effect also changed, but the compressor is going to redefine how we use the effect chain to make the sound better. The compressor effect has been added as a real-time effect and it is going to affect very much on how we use Audacity. The compressor effect has a totally different arrangement, and I guess it also has changed how it was working behind. That is a good thing though as the compressor effect of Audacity was somewhat different than other software. Now it looks like Audacity is following the standard compressor settings of other software. Let's now briefly see how this new compressor works. As I added the compressor as a real-time effect, there is a live watch area below where you can see a waiting playback. This area shows how the compressor is affecting the audio in real-time. If I play the audio now, you can see something in the area. 
The graph appearing below is the loudness level of the audio in real time. It gives us an idea of how we can configure the compressor. The current compressor settings are actually ineffective for this audio. It is very important to understand if the compressor is acting on the audio or not. How do I know that the current compressor settings were inactive? When the compressor is active, we will see some in the top area of this graph. For now, it is empty. The numbers here are the dB level, it is showing from minus 18 dB to 0 dB. My threshold is set at minus 10 dB, but my audio level is below that. For that reason the compressor was inactive. If I lower the threshold and play, you will see some indication at the top area. With a threshold of minus 18.7 dB, the actual compression is very low. To increase the compression, I have to adjust the threshold level. The real-time effect allows us to adjust the settings in real-time and see its effect. As I decreased the threshold more, the amount of compression got bigger. You can understand that from the yellow line above. There are other things to configure to get perfect compressor settings like the knee or ratio. I will make a separate video discussing all the details of configuring the compressor. Real-time effects also have a different mechanism to be applied on a track. Notice there is no apply button inside this configuration box. You may think, then how do I apply these effects? One way to apply the real-time effect is to mix and render from the mix menu. Go to the mix menu and select mix and render. The compressor effect has been applied and there is no compressor effect in the real-time effect list. I will make a detailed video soon on real-time effects. I showed you the compressor effect as a real-time effect. How about if I add that from the regular effect menu? There are some differences and let's see that briefly. I will go to the compressor effect. You can see the configuration window looks different. You cannot adjust the compressor settings in real time as the monitoring area below the settings is missing. It also has the apply button here and no real time playback is possible. You may also want to check the factory presets of this new compressor. Most of the presets are targeted for music production or songs. You can browse through different presets to get an idea of how they are configured. You will get a better understanding once you know what all these settings mean. Please note that the new features in this version have been targeted for better integration with MuseHub effects. If you do not know Audacity is now under Muse Group, and MuseHub is their software. MuseHub is free, and it has some plugins that work well with Audacity. MuseHub has these plugins to work as a real-time effect in Audacity. I think Audacity development is now pushing towards real-time effects. I feel Audacity is heading in a new direction and we have to adjust our Audacity learning. From the change log you can see what other features Audacity 3.6 has got. You may be wondering if should you update to this Audacity version. The rule of thumb is never to update Audacity in the middle of a project. If you are working on a project now, complete that first with the Audacity version you have. Once that project is done and complete, upgrade Audacity when you have no active project. Many people suffered by upgrading Audacity in the middle of a project. Because sometimes unknown bugs can come in with the newer version and can destroy your progress on the ongoing project. So complete your current project first, then upgrade. I will now show you my most popular Audacity product, One Click Sound Better Macros. You may wonder if it will work with the new Audacity. Yes, it will work 100% okay with the new Audacity. If you do not know about these macros, let me show you how it works. You can see a comment from a user of these macros. The comment shows how happy she was as the macros are saving tons of her editing time. Let's get back to how the macros work. You can see I am using 3.6.1. I am using the classic interface as I am comfortable with this interface. In the next part of the video, I will show you one tool that makes your sound better in one click. Yes, it sounds too good to be true, but your audio will be processed in a click. It is an amazing audacity tool I developed with my years of audio editing experience. You will also get some professional EQs with this tool. If you are into professional voice editing, this is a handy tool. You can turn your raw recording into professional quality in a single click. The waveform you see on the screen is a raw recording. Before using my tool, I would just play a few seconds so that you can hear the original recording. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend to use Audacity as... You heard the original recording and the volume level is lower than the standard level. I will make a duplicate and compare the original and the improved version. I will apply the tool to the bottom track. Select everything inside the track by double clicking and go to tools. Then go to apply macro. You can I see I have lots of macros here. You will not have such a list, but I will tell you in a moment where you can get these. I have several types of improvement like clear vocal, ESS reduction, intelligent improve, interview improve, podcast improve etc. All these improvements can improve audio quality in a single click. 
I will show you in a moment where you can get these. I will apply the clear vocal improve on this recording. The audio has become improved instantly. Let's listen to the original and improved audio to understand the difference. I will play and alternate between the improvement and the original. Audacity is a pre audio recording and Audacity is a pre audio recording and editing software and I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity as the first software if you are in if you are new to audio editing and recording, I recommend using Audacity. Though Audacity may not be as stable as other paid audio editing software, but it is a good software to start with. So you see what a massive improvement I got just in a click. Installation of these macros is very easy. Let me show you how to install these macros quickly. You will see how easy it is to install. From the tools menu, go to Macro Manager. You have to import the macros. Click on Import. You will get a zip file from me and unzip that file, and you will get the macros and EQs folder. To import the macros, select the macros folder. If you want to use the professional EQ separately, you will also get those in the EQs folder. For now, we will concentrate only on the macros, because it has the professional EQ and other audio processing built into it. Inside the macros folder, you will get some TXT files. From the file name, you would know which macro it is. Each TXT file is a separate macro. You have to select a macro and open. You have to import the macros one by one as Audacity does not support bulk import of macros. I already had the macro, so it is asking me to replace it. You won't see this message installing for the first time. If I click yes, the current version of the macro will replace the older version. The macros you have imported will be listed on the left side and are ready to use. You can see the name here. Repeat this process to import all the macros if you want. This process is very simple and easy to follow. If you need help installing these, you will get after sales service after purchasing. So where do you get these macros? You can get these macros from several places. To support different payment methods, I have uploaded these macros on Patreon, on my shop, and buy me a coffee page. You can get the macros from any of the links you find convenient. They all have the same product. I have developed 11 macros with professional EQs with my years of audio editing experience. I have a detailed installation guide in the description. You will also get an installation PDF guide and all the necessary links are give there. If you want to use these professional EQ separately, you will find instructions on that. These macros come with after sales service, so if you have any difficulty using or installing these macros, you can email me. If you are looking for an efficient way to produce high quality voice, these macros are the solution. I am also launching a new Audacity course with version 3.6. Because the Audacity interface has changed significantly and the editing workflow has changed. You will see all the links in the description and pinned comments.